Hello everyone, welcome back to the Project Veritas actual headquarters, post-renovation. We are back in our building, which was destroyed by a flood, and the wall of shame is currently under construction, but I'm at my desk. That's right, Retracto, moving on up in the world. This one goes to People Magazine. People Magazine had to print four retractions. And this article titled, was actually Biden's diary stolen? How the president's daughter got caught in a legal fight after a leak. And at the bottom, there it is. The story has been updated, updated with four retractions. It is Sunday. I'm wearing a suit and tie. I'm back in my office. I'm feeling great. We're coming in hot. Cue the retraction theme song. This People Magazine article is the Moab, mother of all bomb retractos, because it's People Magazine, and they had to print four different retractions. And the first lie was, quote, this is them quoting me at People Magazine, quote, we are insurgents who have an existential threat against us by the government, the system which seeks to shut us down, and a complacent and corrupt media, close quote. O'Keefe argued in a 2018 Politico profile where he also acknowledged selectively editing some of the group's videos. So the People Magazine reporter's name was Aaron Parsley. He's the digital politics writer for People Magazine. Now let's take a look at what, what article that Aaron actually hyperlinked to. This is the Politico Magazine headline, James O'Keefe can't get no respect. And in this magazine article, it says, quote, yet because I selectively edit, O'Keefe says, using bunny quotes, air quotes, I'm the most despicable person on the planet. So I'm not acknowledging that I'm selectively editing our videos in any nefarious way. I'm literally being sarcastic. <laughs> and Politico is reporting my sarcasm, but that's lost upon this journalist. So they were forced to update, update that claim. And now it reads, O'Keefe argued in a 2018 political profile where he also sarcastically referred to the claim he selectively edits some of the group's videos. If you really want to look at egregious editing, I actually had said this in the Political Magazine uh, article. I referenced Katie Couric. I don't know why she hasn't been branded with a scarlet letter for her doctored tape involving a 2016 documentary about guns. And people still read Rolling Stone, even though they published a 9,000 word account of a campus rape at University of Virginia where uh, a rape did not occur. And we have a whole wall of 350 some odd retractions and corrections and articles questioning our ethics. Yet we're somehow branded for editing tapes. So it's called editing. Let's go to the second retraction. This is the statement from People Magazine, quote, the Washington Post reported how the group apparently tried to trick their reporters into printing a false sexual assault allegation against a conservative politician. That just wasn't true. So this was false, and they hyperlinked to the initial Washington Post article. And in the very Washington Post article that Aaron Parsley from People Magazine links to, Martin Barron, the Post's executive editor, Marty Barron, admitted the, quote, intent of Project Veritas clearly was to publicize the conversation if we fell for the trap as part of what he called a, quote, scheme to deceive and embarrass us. Even the Post understood the intent of Project Veritas was never to trick the Post into reporting false information. We were there to pose as something that we were not in order to get these reporters to open up to us, to, to reveal things to us they otherwise would not, which is our raison d'etre, which is our MO, our modus operandi, in all of our undercover investigations that we've done into CNN, into the New York Times, into Twitter, into Facebook, and this was a distinction lost upon the media who wanted to ascribe intent to us. But in this case, even executive editor Marty Barron acknowledged that reality. So our attorney requested they delete this false statement, and they did. It has been updated, updated, to read as follows. The Washington Post reported how the group apparently tried to trick the reporters by peddling a false allegation against a conservative politician. Tricked the reporters by peddling a false allegation. So, so that's called undercover journalism. Like in the Acorn case, when I dressed up like a pimp, I wasn't trying to actually traffic in underage girls. That's absurd. 
I may have said that was my intent. Obviously, I don't have a shipping container with 13-year-olds. But do you see how they framed it? Now they say it's, quote, trick the reporters by peddling a false allegation. If we said something was false, and those journalists told us in private that they didn't care that it was false, that's a big deal. And that was our intent. But do you see how they characterized it? And of course, you always have to twist these things a little bit and turn it around through, a, through kind of a lens to actually find out what they're actually trying to say. Nevertheless, they had to print an update. And that's the second update from People Magazine. Now let's go to the third. The third correction was this quote, James O'Keefe pleaded guilty after pretending to be a telephone employee to enter then Senator Mandrew Larry's office. False, that is factually incorrect. They've printed more corrections in this one article than we've printed corrections in the last 10 years. Oh, you can't make this shit up. So okay, this is false according to the people that prosecuted me. The prosecutors in this case admitted in this document signed by a United States attorney that I was trying to quote, orchestrate conversations. <laughs> also known as talk to people, which is what journalists do. I have my iPhone with me. <laughs> Orchestrate a conversation. Do you see how they, do you see how they describe certain things? Again, you have to, you have to twist it a little bit to understand what exactly they're referencing. Orchestrate a conversation. But even the prosecutors admitted that there was uh, me not dressed up like a telephone man. So this People magazine had to print a third update, update, by the way, at the, begin at the bottom of the article, they just say this art the article has been updated. You don't know what it has been updated with. It just says updated. And that update reads as follows. James O'Keefe pleaded guilty after entering then-Senator Mary Landry's office under false pretenses. They would never prosecute other journalists for walking into a building with an iPhone and some questions. That just would not happen. So the final correction that People Magazine printed, and again, now we're in the domain of many more corrections and retractions they've made in this article than I've made in the last 10 years of my life. It appears the case began after Project Veritas started corresponding directly with the Bidens. The New York Times reported last month that Ashley's attorney reached out to federal prosecutors when Project Veritas sent a message in October seeking an on-camera interview with then-presidential candidate about the diary. The Biden campaign called it extortion. But in this case, the Biden campaign never even called it extortion. After we made the decision internally not to do the Ashley Biden story because we couldn't authenticate it, and even if we could, we couldn't verify if the contents occurred, we nonetheless continued to try to corroborate it by reaching out to the Biden campaign, requesting an interview, because that's really the ethical, responsible thing to do, right? Because on the off chance, maybe there was something newsworthy, and it was our ethical obligation to reach out. But the New York Times doctored, selectively edited, the thing that we sent to the Biden campaign to make it look a little more nefarious. They edited out the sentence, this is done in good faith. They edited out certain parts of that letter requesting a comment, and they characterized our request for comment as, quote, seeking leverage. It was a request for comment. It was called a request for comment. And there, there was the Penrose stairs, the circularly sourced attributions where someone says leverage, another person, Rachel Maddow, calls it extortion, and the internet goes wild, and a lie goes halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to put its shoes on. So we requested that the People magazine retract that, and they did. The after now says, Ashley's lawyers called the request, quote, extortionist. And there was a strange thing admitted by the way, in that New York Times, Rachel Maddow sort of episode where actually Biden said, let's contact the SDNY. One of Ashley Biden's lawyers, Roberta Kaplan, told Mr. Eid, quote, this is insane. We should send to SDNY. Like they, they were gonna work with their buddies over there. The real question that no journalist is asking because of course the New York Times and is in bed with pharmaceutical companies and the New York Times is in bed with the FBI and in bed with the Department of Justice. But if they were actual journalists, the question they would be asking is, did Ashley Biden's lawyer lie to the FBI? And if she did, will she be prosecuted? There you have it. The Moab, the mother of all retractos. Four retractions. Aaron Parsley, all of it could have been avoided if you just stuck to the facts. Retractable, the correction of power.